Hey guys, did you know I'm going live? I just got a notification from YouTube. <laughs> it was loud. It was loud. It was really loud. I've turned my email off. How are you guys? Welcome. Welcome to my channel. This is um, my husband, Todd. Hi. Hi. Um, so tonight, Todd and I are, I did a video last week where I opened up about a um, time in our lives where um, I got involved in a rock band, sort of evangelical Pentecostal light um, cult. Rock. Yes, rock. And my husband, who when we first met, sit up. I am sitting up. No, like. There's. You understand? Hey, do you understand my legs are a lot longer? Than I know, yours. I know, I know, but you're blurry. You're blurry. I know. Here, how's. Okay. Let's see, now, now, now I look like a monster. You don't look like a monster. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're having some technical issues, you guys. I'm just trying to direct him, and he's just like. <laughs> um, How's that? Is that's that better. better. Um, let me just maybe. Okay. Are you seriously trying to do that with your eyeballs right now? Okay. <laughs> Stop it. You're so ridiculous. Okay. Um, so back in 2015, um, I persuaded my husband to go to to the to the cult with me although I didn't know it was a cult at the time and my husband's mom was in the middle of um, battling kidney cancer kidney cancer well it, yeah it, I mean it's it, it started out as kidney cancer but it had by the time it metastasized. It, by, the, by the time it was caught, it was it was in her brain and yeah. right, yeah, okay. So Ardell, his mother, got sick, and so did my uncle, um, Chuck, and they both um, did they both pass away relatively? It was, it was pretty it was, close to each other. I think I think Chuck didn't Chuck die in that. Spring? He was in December, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Was he? I don't remember. It was such a blur. Anyways, my uncle got sick, who was my um, mother's, my, so my aunt's husband, and it was my aunt's husband that my mom was the closest to. So it was the uncle that I was around the most as a child, um, and I was really close to his sons. And he got, um, he had vascular disease and then um, he passed away and he was only just over like in his very early 60s. And then Todd's mother ended up getting, um, she developed kidney cancer, but by the time that it was caught or actually found, she had had a seizure and they did a scan in the hospital and they had found lesions on her brain. Yep. And so by the time they diagnosed her, it was in her lungs, her kidneys, her brain, and, and her soft tissue. And her soft tissue. So it was stage four when she was finally diagnosed. And she had a very, very grim prognosis at that point. Um, six months, I think. Yeah. And I think from the time that she was diagnosed until the time that she ultimately passed away, it wasn't even a year. I think it was around 10 months. 10 maybe. months. I think she was diagnosed in August. She died in the following And she June. died in June. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, during that time, obviously we had that going on. We were dealing with, um, Todd's. Uh, Todd, Todd's father, who was struggling um, with the magnitude of what we were facing, and he didn't he didn't want her to be in uh, any sort of facility. He, he wanted her at home. At home, and he he, he fought tooth, tooth and, and nail, nail and yeah. he finally did get to have her 
she ended up passing away at, at, at home. Right. And he also, like, <clears throat> delayed hospice and um, put her through chemo that she didn't really want to go through. And it was just very hard. We had to have, like... Um, advocacy meetings where the hospital kind of sat him down and had to help him understand the reality. He was just really struggling and put a lot of stress on all of us because we wanted to help him, but we also wanted to help him understand where we were at. I think a lot of us knew because she was a longtime smoker and um, she was smoking up until the end of her life. And one of the outside of lung cancer, the second most common form of cancer that a smoker will will be diagnosed with is kidney cancer. I had no idea. And well, and plus she was a heavy drinker. Yeah. As well. Don't, don't rip that. Okay. Also, we had only been living here for what? A couple of year, year, year and only a half? Year. Only a year. A year. Living in this um, neighborhood that we uh, live in now for it was actually less than a year that we, well, and we, yeah, yeah, it was less than a year that we lived here that she was diagnosed. Give or take, yeah, and um, we, uh, <laughs> we, we've always sort of felt like interlopers since we've moved moved here. Yeah, we don't I think, belong. I think Katie's talked about it before on the streams, but um, we don't belong here at all. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, we were just kind of. I don't know. Just kind of searching for some sort of uh belonging <laughs> yes community for lack of a better word right <clears throat> we're like we're like fish out of water here there are days where i'm like why do we even live here but then i'm reminded that my son has an amazing school and i love my house so <laughs> those two reasons keep me here so i ended up finding this church and when my husband and I first got, when Todd and I first got married, the one of the, actually when we first met, one of the first things he asked me was whether or not I was religious. And I was like, no. And he said, well, I can't marry someone that's religious. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. I don't go to church. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And he was like, I'm an atheist. And I was like, that's great. Yay. <laughs> But apparently his, like, one of his girlfriends was kind of, I don't know, religious or something, and that was, like, an issue or something. I don't remember. No? Do well, I remember I, thing, things wrong? I don't know. That's irrelevant. I just I just didn't want to... At, Speak up. At, at my age, when, when Katie and Speak I... Speak up. When Katie and I met... <laughs> is that, are we supposed... Are we looking at the... The microphone's right there, but I know, you need but to... When, when Katie and I met, I was... Your voice 30, is still low. 38. <laughs> and uh, at that point in my life, I, um, this is going to sound really bad, but I, I didn't want to have to deal with somebody who wasn't on my same political and, um, I don't know, religious level or lack of religious level at that, at that point. You wanted to have shared common <clears throat> values. So... Right? Yeah. Yeah. So imagine his surprise when I decide we're going to go to church. <laughs> we dabbled in the dark arts. <laughs> we were never going to go to church. In fact, remember when we first had ta um, Vaughn and there was this... Um, oh, that nurse? Well, no. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how when we were looking for a daycare... And there was one at a church, and we were like, no, we will not support that. We will not pay a church to take care of our son because we didn't want the money to give money to a church. Well, and I, I didn't want him to be um, indoctrinated. indoctrinated at such a young age. Right. Because um, even though it was a separate entity, the money and the supporting... Um, um, the money supporting... Um, We didn't want to support the church. Anyways, so anyways, we go back, and this is not an anti-church stream. We're literally just sharing what, where we came from and where we were and how we got there. Freedom of religion, baby. So if you are a Christian, we are not hating you. If you are not a Christian, we are not hating you. 
we are sharing our experience. If, if you're a heathen, we're yeah, not, if, we're not if, loving if, you. If you're a heathen, heathen, if you're whatever, you are. Everyone is welcome here. What is not welcome here are chat comments telling my husband to leave the family. Okay, those will get deleted, even if you are a member. Is that is that why you got tripped up there for? A yes. Bit? Oh. Okay. So, um, where we're going to go from here is in February or in December, right before Christmas 2014, I went to this church, I believe, maybe it was 2015, I don't remember, but I went to this church and I was like convinced that this is where we needed to be because everyone was so nice, they had coffee, they pretended to be super amazing they said they were super open um that they didn't judge anyone that everyone was welcome and it was all very like done in a way where you thought what you were getting was a progressive form of modern day christianity but it wasn't right yeah we um we soon uh we we were able to lift the veil. We we found the we found the wizard behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> so when I did a stream a couple weeks ago, I talked about um, how we like got involved in this thing. How it took up all of our time. How um, I was like doing. I was volunteering. We were volunteering on Sundays. We were going to groups on Mondays. We had some times we had two groups a week. Um, we were doing, I was doing women's group. Um, I, I, you didn't do a men's group, did you? No. no, he didn't do a men's group, but it was like, we were super invested. And then our friends were in this group. And then the pastor was always telling us to only be friends with the people in the group. And we would go to these groups at his house on Monday nights. Right. Yeah. And it would be like, we're not going to judge you guys. But let's do a worksheet where we talk about how all the people that are out there are not doing the right form of Christianity and how they're not the right people and what you're doing better. <laughs> That's literally what we did, right? Every week. There was a week, remember when we did the week about marriage and um, it, was, it had to do with premarital SEX and the pastor was like, if you had a friend that was in their 30s and um, was decided to be intimate with a partner outside of marriage, would you tell them, what would you tell them about your thoughts about what they were doing? Do you remember that question? I do not. Oh my God, I almost lost my mind. I literally almost lost my mind. Like, are you seriously going to tell me that I have to tell my 35-year-old friend Betsy that she can't go get some because it's against God's will? So... You lost me. Was so so thirty five year old Betsy. She she's not married to anybody. She has no. She's not. She she. There's no connection to anybody intimately, and she wants to go. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah. This is YouTube, so I, I can't. Yeah, you can't say you, that you, word. You guys know what I'm talking about, but so so basically, he was saying that as her. Friend, the and, right thing would to do would to tell her not to do that. <laughs> so we were supposed to like tell people that were like consenting adults that it was not Christ-like. And I was like, are you effing kidding me? What if Betsy was married? And this is a, just a uh, hypothetical Betsy. What if Betsy was married? <laughs> And she got a divorce, and she already gave away her V card. What if Betsy just wanted to go get some fun and get some jollies off, and I'm going to call her up and be like, Hey, Betsy, um, Jeremiah said that... I, I, would hope, I would hope that Betsy would tell you that, Bob. Yeah. It's, so, it's, nobody's, it's nobody's business is, is what it is. Oh, Betsy's in chat. Yeah, Betsy, we're not talking oh. about you, but we love you, Betsy. I'm married, too. So... <laughs> Betsy, do whatever you want. Yeah, to. Betsy, you go, girl. You go get some. Um, but this, to me, was so funny because there was people in the group that literally were like, I would tell Betsy not to do it. I would remind Betsy 
that when you do that, you are joining your souls and then uh, you're leaving a little piece of yourself in that person that you can never get back and that person is gonna stay in you. And I was like, that's not how it works. <laughs> what if Betsy doesn't even remember who Craig is next year? Like, Betsy might forget Craig, he, she might forget John, she might forget Steve, she might forget all of them. What if she did the walk of shame all the way to church the next day? Yeah. <laughs> and that's between Betsy and Steve and Jim and Craig and all the guys that Betsy's hanging out with and whoever she's talking to upstairs. But that's like, I remember it got, the questions got progressively more pushy about what we were supposed to tell people about God and how we were supposed to remind people how to live like God and how to be like God. And I noticed that our friends, when we were around them, that's all they talked about. All of them. It was crazy. Like no conversation was without. Then there was this period where he went through this time and this was the part of it that I wanted to explain to you that was not so one of the things that the Duggars talk about is remember that Derek wrote this blog and he had this rule that when he's in the office and a woman walks into the office, he keeps the door open and he doesn't have private meetings with women out of respect for his wife. The, dude, turn off the porn. <laughs> I can't see that word. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> turn, turn it off. That's not real life. That's no. Not, that's not, that, 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 like, if, if the implication is that because he has a female in his office and the door is closed, that automatically, you know, she's under the desk within two minutes. Yeah. That, that's not how life works. Right. It, it, it's just, oh, people are ridiculous. It, you know, the, the. Hold on. Let me just go to this point before you go there. But what I was thinking about was how Jeremiah, so that's what Derek Dillard said, right? And he's a fundy, you guys. Well, Jeremiah, who was our pastor, he used to tell us that men and women should not be friends. And that men should not eat with women. Married men should not eat with married women. Married men and married women should not have any sort of conversation Unmarried women and married men should not speak and unmarried men and married women should not speak and you should not travel with an unmarried man if you're married and vice versa and you shouldn't be doing any of this and you should never eat with them. You should never talk to them. You are not supposed to have a relationship with these people at all. Actually, I don't even think it was necessarily married versus unmarried. It was don't basically don't be with the opposite sex unless you're spouse and their spouse if they happen to have a spouse knows about it and even if it's um let's say you have a let's say there's a male that goes to that's a member of that church and they have a female colleague yeah and they need to go to a different state yeah because there's a client that's mad and they got to go to this other state and they have to smooth things over with this client for whatever it is that they do for work. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. You're going to end up in bed. <laughs> like if you traveled with your coworker who was of the opposite sex, therefore you are going to have an affair or, you know, because he'd always say nobody plans to have an affair. So you need to plan how not to have an affair. How about you don't sexualize everything, Jeremy? Damn, you can't say that. How I can't say that? No. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> well, how, how do you... Okay. <laughs> you have to get creative. You just can't hyper everything. You know, you can't make everything about SEX. Right? Well, the, and that's what, that's what those fundies do, though. Right. Every, everything is about that. It is. And everything that he did was about that. I was looking through a lot of our old talks, and it was either give us money, 
<laughs> yeah, cash out your 401k. Cash out so, your 401k so, so we can build I a can church. build a building. We, I'm jealous of people that have big churches because I don't have one. Um, the other talks, <laughs> that was, he always talked about that. I know, I was going to say that, that, I think that speaks to something, <laughs> and something the, else. And then he would always talk about how, he would always talk about marriage. He would say that men need sex and it's a women a woman's duty to give sex to their man because that's the only way a man connects with his wife seriously the, the, and that's what the fundies say so i'm telling you we were getting fundy doctrine packaged in a bow to look like it was modern and it was not modern at all well I really I don't even know what to say because it, like I don't want to <laughs> Well, you know, I don't want to get your channel in trouble, but yeah, it's it's it, um I don't I told I told Katie this the other day that I I I went into it kind of with my BS meter. It was it was pretty high. Um and I mean, I'll admit for like we we um when we when I first started going there I, I, I kind of liked it just because I, I we were in such a, a horrible um state of, of mind um yes that and and the pastor and, and and this is again this is this is where I think this is where Katie um uses it's a little bit tongue in cheek but the, she uses the word cult to describe this church. Because the pastor is very, uh, I don't know, charming. I mean, he's, he's, he's charismatic. He's, he's charismatic. He's funny. He's very funny. He's um, like, he wants to be the rock star. He wants to be. He wants to be. A, I think he kind of, want, I think he probably in his like childhood, he probably wanted to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I've always kind of pictured him as a kid, like standing in front of the mirror. And telling, well, and telling he would jokes. like, the reason why I called him like that was because he had a lot of the characteristics of a charismatic cult leader where... I, I, I agree I agree but um, what I'm saying is um, so that so like the way that he sort of structured his um, talks or whatever you want to call it um, on, on Sundays was you know it, it was some some it was he kept it interesting like he, he kept he kept uh, it wasn't boring. I mean, it, it was, it was, he, he threw in jokes and, and he, it the was, same very, it, jokes was, it was, it was very... over and over well, and right, over. Right, 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 right. He constantly talked about how good looking he was. I'm not even joking. That was like his favorite thing to talk about was how good looking he was. And then like fart, fart jokes and whatever. Um, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. So like, like that's, um, that was one of the things that, that kind of kept me going back because, um, it was entertaining. It was, enter yeah, it was entertaining. And even though my, my BS meter was up, I could kind of look past a lot of some of the things that really bothered me that, that yeah. he said that, that was like very, you know, along the, the lines of the, of the, of the, just the, the fundy, um, doctrine. And so little by little, I, I just started to really just I, I didn't like I didn't like going there anymore just because I, I like like Katie said all the all the t like after like about nine months or so like he recycled the same house yeah every, everything it was almost like we it's, it was almost like we were watching reruns of TV shows yeah. because it was the same thing over all the time. and over and over again and nothing and and um I don't know I just like but that, it was that, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was the same talks. It was like, give me money. Give me more money. Men and women should not be friends. Women should be like, um, the men should be the leaders. Women, let your husbands be leaders. Husbands be, um, ladies, make sure you give your, some, your hubby some spanky spank time. And hubbies, make sure you give your wife some talky talk time because that's all she needs. That's all she wants. And the only way she's going to give you some spanky spank is if you do the talky talk. I mean, <laughs> that's what he's talked about constantly. <coughs> and, his, and, and he was always talking about how you can only do this in the under, of, a, of, a, of a marriage. And that, 
Oh, his other thing was for young people who are considering getting intimate, he would say to them, well, we want to have this or we're doing this. We're doing the hokey pokey. And he would say, you either need to stop the hokey pokey or you need to get married. And so then kids would get married to do the hokey pokey. They may, they may have been, they may have been ready to do, do the hokey pokey, to do the hokey pokey, but, but they, they were, were not, not ready, ready to get, to get married. married. So, so, so now because, you know, God says that you can't partake in that activity unless you're married, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to bring these two people together in a contract. Yes. And, you know, just because, you know, <laughs> Was the... do, doing a natural act but not being married is just so messed up but we're we're gonna we're gonna put these two these two young people into a situation where they're probably not ready for it and then they're probably gonna get divorced and they might then they might actually have kids by this time and it and so it just creates a mess right and he was married he and his wife got married really young so they could do the hokey pokey (laughs) And he would always make a joke about that. Well, why do Christians get married so young? So they can do the hokey pokey. Like that was literally what he would say. So then there would, there would always be these, um, he would always do, there was this time when we were sitting in church. And this is what I'm talking about. I was going back through all the different crazy things they told us um, where they were talking about education. And Andrew, who was a previous pastor, basically told people, you don't need to get, you need to go to college. That's of this world. That's worldly. You don't need a college education to make money. And I'm sitting there going, what? I mean, I grew up Catholic and never in the Catholic church did they tell you not to go to college. In fact, there are Catholic colleges where it's like Notre Dame for, you know, like Notre Dame, right? Like touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus. I grew up in the Catholic church and you went to college. That's just what you did. And so to be in a church like where they're like, you don't need to go to college. And then it was like everyone homeschooled their kids. Wow. Yeah. And remember, okay, what was the home? Okay. People always say, they always say that I'm ripping on homeschoolers when I'm, when I'm talking about this, please tell them what it was like to be around the families that actually homeschooled their kids. Were the kids ever doing schoolwork? No. They were never doing schoolwork, ever. And the, the, the reason, I mean, that's, that's a little bit of a blanket statement. I'm, I mean, I'm sure that not all the families were that way, but the, the underlying issue is that the reason why these people homeschooled is because I'm sure they probably, you know, they probably think that within the the public school systems, even in a even in an area like ours, which is extremely conservative, uh, conservative, yeah, that, they'll be exposed to things. Yeah, and, and God's not allowed there, right? Which is total BS. God is allowed there. Sorry, you 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 could if you're a Christian and you want to read your Bible in in the library by yourself quietly, you. In a public school, you can feel free to do so all you want, and nobody's gonna say a word about it. Right. But but they they think that you know that because it has to be quieted and it has to be sort of private because right. re- religion is really should be a, at least in my opinion it should be a, a personal thing. These people homeschooled because they felt like. You know, you can't you can't pledge of allegiance because it has the word God in it, and you know the public schools are just the the, the devil. Right. And like, Bunny, you guys are always like in the comments. You're always making things about yourselves. My husband has a degree. He's he go he went to a trade school. A trade school is actually a form of college. It's higher education, post secondary, beyond high school. My husband went to trade school. For electrician, like to, for like electrician stuff, right? Like electrical maintenance, electrical and maintenance, construction. instruction. So trade school is like trade school is a sped up. It's it's if you go to a trade school, you 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 better darn well be 
on your P's and Q's because it's essentially a four year curriculum crammed into two years. But the, the point isn't that you need to go to college. They're telling people not to go to college. Right, right. They're not, they're not saying make that choice on your own. Right. And, they, and they're not saying that, they're not saying that, you know, college is good if, you know, is not, if it's not good for the goose, it's, it, it could be good for the gander. They're not saying that. They're saying do not go to college because you don't need it. Right. And I didn't say you were downgrading, Bunny. I was saying that, like, trade schools are for sure, like, higher education. And they're not even saying you need to go to trade school. They're saying you don't need to go to college, period. Because you don't need it, because it's not of this world and it doesn't matter. Which is completely different than, you know, in this day and age, do you have to have a degree? No. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but the statistics <laughs> don't lie that you're going to have a higher probability of getting a job where you're going to make more money with a college education. That doesn't mean there's people without college educations that are not making money. Correct. It just means they are the exception, not the rule. So they do this to sort of keep you ignorant. <laughs> Don't go to college, homeschool your kids, and then none of the kids that we were around were, be were in school. And so it was like, the longer we were there, I was like, what are we involved in? And everyone was so insular and everyone spoke about him like he was God, like he was prophet, like anything he said was rule. And it was really uncomfortable because any time that he would speak, well, we have to defer to what Jeremiah said. Why do we have to defer to what Jeremiah said? He's just a damn pastor. He's not God. It doesn't even make sense. And, and and then came all the talks about him wanting to build an actual church building because the, at the time that we were going there that they didn't have their own facilities so it was in a um, was it but a junior high a junior high school yeah we were in a junior high and so it was in the auditorium of this junior high school and right. um, boy he wanted that building it you know the hypocrisy of every time the word church like the word church was brought up and and it was drilled into our heads that church does not mean a facility it does not mean a physical structure church means the 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 community or the the whatever what do you call that what do you call that gathering of church like a, you know the the parishioners or whatever right um but then at the end of every talk he asked for money. You know, don't don't forget to tithe, and if you know this, the the money that you go out and you bust your ass to make is it's not yours. Not your money. It's not. It's God's money, and He's entrusted that in you. In you. So the money that you make is not really yours. Is well, it's not only is it not really yours. It's His. Not only is it not really yours, but you know somebody who I don't know makes. 50 grand a year and is doing okay God's for some reason entrusted that amount of money to those people mm -hmm. and then the per person down the road from them that's making 25,000 a year and struggling to feed his kids that's also what God entrusted to that person correct so what <laughs> and he would always say that like God just sees some people making more money and that just means that he he trusts you more with money than the other person. And I would be like, what? That doesn't even make sense. So Steve down the street that makes four million just gets like God was just like, Steve, you just look like a more trustworthy person. So I'm just going to give you four million. And Bob down the street, who's a teacher who makes 25K, he's just like, Bob, you're a loser. Here's only your 25K. Yeah. Probably. And I'm not saying teachers are losers. That's just sort of the the way that he made it seem. Like, if you made less, it was just because God didn't trust you. 
And every time he would ask for money, he would say that you're giving, you're not giving money to me. You're giving money to God. And I'm like, what? God doesn't need any more money. But God isn't here. Where are you? He's not of this world. What are you talking about? How am I giving money to God if I'm giving money to you? You're not God, right? It never made sense to me. It's, it's all hypocritical. And the, the tipping point, I don't know, well, I don't, are we fast forwarding well, too, no. too, too much? But I, the, the tipping point for me was when, I mean, it, it was it was hard. It was hard to go there almost every Sunday and listen to the fact that, you know, oh, you know, we, we you know, we you guys are so generous and, and, and this, that, and the other thing. You're, you're such a generous church and we love you for that. And, and, you know, the last time we asked for a big gift, which was, which was essentially they were asking for more than what the, the 10% for uh, like the tithing or whatever. Oh yeah, he would say they, like you need to tithe X, but then you need to give us more on top of that because, because trying, that's not enough because we need to build a because we're trying to build this church. Yeah, and then it's you know and then and then people would you know people would be generous and give and then f- two months later it'd be like oh you know blah 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 something you know we're we're really close we're really close but we need your best gift. We need your best gift, and then and then all of a sudden they send out a uh, flyer, a flyer in the mail, and it asks and it's us to liquidate our four hundred one k. Basically, yes, asking you, asking people to cash out their savings, ca- uh, li- yeah, cash out your four hundred one k, and and give it to. Probably they would always recommend people not save for the future because you're not going to take it with you. So they'd be like, you don't need 401k. You don't need to save for the future. You're not going to take this with you. You should just spend what you have when you have it. And what I would find hypocritical here, you guys, is that we had friends in the church who were going to the food shelf every single week and his family was going to Florida and buying a four hundred thousand dollar house, and still asking that, and still for 10%. asking ten percent from that family, and not helping that family ever. And if people in the church needed help, the church didn't have money to help them. And he would always say, he'd always say, "Well, you just have to trust us that we won't, you know, um, pay ourselves too much." Well, guess who did the books? His wife. His wife. And they didn't file any documents at all. Like, a, a, they can file documents, which are like a specific form for nonprofits that itemize what they're making so that people, like, it's a public document. So there's transparency. Yeah, they never, ever filed those. So we never had any idea how much money they were making. And they were always like, well, our operating cost is around $875,000 a year. And I'm like, for what? They were, they were, they were, they were getting, uh, the school was allowing them to use the school. For free. For free. So they had rental fees? What? And a couple staff members? Yeah, they had a couple, they had a couple trucks that they, that they used to, to, to haul in all their garb. What were they spending the <laughs> money they, on? But they really didn't, I mean, they really didn't have much, like, garb either. I mean, no! It, it was... The, the, bare bones! The state, I mean, all, like, the, there were screens, screens in the back of the, in behind the pastor, but I'm sure those belonged to the, to the school. I don't think those were, hit, you know, I don't think... Some of them were theirs, church. but a lot of that stuff was also donated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people donated their time. Sound people donated their time. Musicians donated their their own, like they brought their own, like guitars and drums and that kind of stuff. They had no operating costs. Yet they had a hundred eight hundred seventy five thousand dollar operating cost, and they had four staff. And tw- and twelve percent of the parishioners were the ones who were were twelve twelve percent of the parishioners at that church were basically responsible for um g- giving that money or that the, the budget came from only 12 percent. so in other words that other what it was <laughs> i can't do quick math 82 percent of the people or, or what are uh 88 percent of the people didn't even tithe or whatever so uh 
Yeah. I don't know. I just... Ugh, yuck. Yeah. And then he said... And then he would say... Um, that was the other thing. Um, one of the last actual sermons we went to, he talked to us about how people weren't donating, donating enough and that if you just donated more, you would have a better relationship with God and God would actually bestow more on you. And if you would just trust in God by giving the church more money, Jesus would love you more. I was like, I am not in the Catholic Church anymore. I am not doing this. Like, no. Did you guys see the person that dealt with the money? The person that dealt with the money was his wife. And they, they, they wouldn't... Op most, most churches, um, they make the the financials that's that's um public public record uh, you know it's it's pub it's yeah it's open to the members yes this church Did, wouldn't open those no. up they would just tell us what the operating costs were they would never tell us what their salaries were they would never tell us like how much money they had in savings what they were spending the money on um they had 27 kids four <laughs> Four, 27. <laughs> they, are, they weren't the Duggars. They only had four. Oh, well, but still. That was a I mean, small family by comparison. I, I know, I know. And, but that, that's, that, that goes to what I was, what, what you were talking about before. Like, um, don't, 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 don't have a 401k or don't have savings because you can't take it with you. Well, dude, you, you, all of you people have 27 kids. <laughs> you, and you're and you're not gonna you're not gonna save for their future like just, yeah well, oh. they're just they're on their own because you know God's gonna take care of them I right it. oh yeah that was the thing like when you're older don't worry about having to have money people will just take care of you oh yeah right what <laughs> tell that to my grandma I was like at a point with them where so you're supposed to hang out with them all the time um, Mr Jeremiah pushes everyone else out the other pastor and him have a brief some sort of abrupt split and then all of a sudden anyone that questions him about we want more programs we want more services where's the money what are you spending the money on it was always met with this is what our church is and if you don't like it you can leave bye bye so people started leaving and then people were like, what are you doing with the money? Where's the money? It was so crazy. And this, this church still exists. They built their church. But they have no denomination. They have no affiliation with any other churches. One in San Diego. One in San Diego. That's another like prosperity church, basically. Just like them somebody's prospering <laughs> so then I was like well this is interesting right I wanted to go back in time and look at some of the sermons and I was like then I was like going through their old Facebook posts for the pastor and his wife his wife follows a Raptors end of time forum where they literally prepare for doomsday <laughs> are you serious yes I'm like, oh my God, what did we get ourselves into? And she likes the um, modern alternative mama. And I was like, oh God, no. What's that? They're the ones that like, the... she's the one that thinks that you can heal everything with anything. You don't need doctors. <laughs> okay. And all of them were sort of suspect of doctors. They all were like super weird about medicine. And um, they're all like organic bone broth. El elderberry syrup, like essential oils, you know. Which is fine to a point. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. So, hold on. Let me pull up the... Um... The characteristics of a cult leader. So, what do they have in common? 
was, Wait, hold was on. The, was, that a, was that a picture of Manson? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they are... This yeah. one's dumb. At least Jeremiah didn't have a swastika on his Hey, board. shh. You can't say that. I can't, I can't even say that word. No. This was what it was. The group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader. <laughs> yes. Questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. If you don't like it, you can leave. There's the door. There's the door. Um, leadership dictates sometimes in great detail how members should think, act, and feel. Members must get permission to date change. Well, no, not so much that. But definitely was like... What you should like, how you should think, how you should feel, how you should act in your marriages. Um, the group is elitist, claiming to be special. It was like always like their brand was better than everybody else. Um, the group is polarized us versus them mentality. We were constantly supposed to look at other forms of Christianity and like dissect what they were doing wrong. Um, the leadership induces feelings of shame and or guilt in order to influence and control members. Often it's done through peer yeah. pressure and subtle forms of persuasion. Yeah, men, men, when you, the second you leave your job, get in your car and you race home to your wife. Yes. Because, oh, you're, you know, if you, if you don't race home to your wife, you're, you're going you're gonna... to. The group is preoccupied with making money. Uh -huh. The group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. That was, a, he was obsessed with bringing in new members every day. Invite your friends, bring your friends. We can't have things a certain way because we have to attract new members. Be a disciple of God. Um, members are encouraged or required to live and or socialize with other group members constantly. You don't need, don't depend on your family. Your family should be in the church. Your church family. Your church family should be your family. He said that all the time. The most loyal members feel there can be no life outside of the context of the group. Oh, 100%. Oh yeah. The most loyal members of this group literally had no real world friends outside of the church. And when I started looking at my social circle and literally every single person was from the church, I was like, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> Cut and run. <laughs> Cut and run. Oh my um, God. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. The And he was charismatic and he was very... Um, oof. Um... Where's the typical traits? They have grandiose idea of who, who he is and what he can achieve. Yes. Is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, and brilliance. Yes. Demands blind, unquestioned obedience. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Requires excessive ad admiration and of follow from followers and outsiders. Yes. Has a sense of entitlement, expecting to be treated special at all times. Yes is exploitative of others by asking for their money or that of relatives putting others at financial risk all the time. The 401k deal. The 401k deal. Holy shit. Is arrogant I, and haughty in his behavior or oh, attitude. Yeah. Has exaggerated sense of power entitlement that allows him to bend rules and break laws. Yes. No, not number nine. Um, well. That number 10, no. <laughs> Is hypersensitive to how he is seen or perceived by others. Yes. Oh, yeah. Publicly devalues others as being inferior, incapable, or not worthy. Yes. Makes members confess sins or faults, publicly subjecting them to ridicule or humiliation while revealing exploitative weaknesses of the penitent. I don't... No, he didn't. He didn't, he, he didn't do that. He or ignores the needs of others, including biological, physical, emotional, and financial needs. Yes is boastful about their accomplishments. Yes. Needs to be the center of attention. Yes. Has insisted on always having the best of anything. Yes. Doesn't seem to listen well to others. Yes. <laughs> Behaves as though people are objects to be used, manipulated, or exploited for personal gain. 
Yes. Like, as soon as he didn't, like, if you weren't going to give him what he wanted, it was like, then go. This is my church. Yeah. I own this. Um, believes himself as omnipotent, has magical answers or solutions to problems, is superficially charming. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Treats others with contempt and arrogance. Constantly assessing people to determine who those who are a threat or those who revere him. The word I dominates his conversations. Yes. In those sermons, how many times was it I? It was never about God. It was always like, I, 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 I. Unbelievable. Works the least but demands the most. Has stated that he is destined for greatness. Seems to be highly dependent on tribute and adoration. Uses and forces or psychophants to ensure compliance from members and believers. Sees self as unstoppable. Conceals background or family which disclose pl how plain or ordinary is. He was always very, like... Did you ever notice when you would ask him about his background in his pastoral studies, like how, like, blasé he was? Like, he wouldn't really be... I, I, the only reason I can say that I didn't notice that is because I never asked him. I never engaged in that kind of conversation yeah. with him. Yeah. Anyway. It was definitely, I remember the day where I was like, he, I remember I was on like the cult institute or something and I was like reading off all of the characteristics of the group and I was like, what did we just put ourselves into? Like, what are we involved in? And then as soon as we left, everyone was like, poof. Like, they didn't talk to us anymore. If we spoke out about it, we were like liars. That wasn't true. We didn't hear things correctly. We misspoke. And it was like, I'm sorry, where did I misspeak? Did he not send me a flyer that asked me to take money out of my 401k for his church? Yeah, that really happened. So, I always think it's odd because we got so involved. <laughs> and I don't think either one of us ever really bought into it. Why do you think we stayed for as long as we did? Like I, like I said, we just like... I, I just think that was a part of our, of our lives where the literally like and not this is going to sound melodramatic but like we really were feeling the weight of the world on yeah our, on our shoulders and we just we, we were like looking we're for a life looking, preserver looking for looking for something and and obviously went to the wrong place yeah i always think it's weird that like people want to become pastors for profit you know what i mean like as a job. Yeah. I always think it's odd. I've never understood that part of organized religion. Like, why a pastor should make so much money for literally just sitting up at a pulpit and, like, talking to you about the Bible. Um, because I grew up in the ch Catholic Church where, you know, they, they priests basically don't make very much, and nor do nuns. Yeah, and they good. basically dedicate themselves to... Um, like a life of modesty and like humility. So these prosperity Bible churches that are very like evangelical and Pentecostal, I don't understand them. And then when I was in it, I was like, holy crap, the money demands never stopped. <laughs> Constantly. And then once we left, we lost all of our friends. But some of the friends we made were just really weird, right? Like, in the real world, we would have never been friends with them. Well, the, and, and that's, I was going to say, like, I, I wouldn't say we lost all, I didn't lose all my friends. I, I, there were, a, there were, there was a, like, one dude that I hung out with, um, <laughs> that went to that church that I don't talk to anymore. But I mean, I, I. I actually went back to my real friends. <laughs> like, 
um, I mean, a lot of those women that, you know, a lot of the, the wives or whatever that, that you were kind of hanging out with and stuff, I mean, they probably, as soon as we left, I'm sure they, they probably didn't want to have anything to do with you. No. Only the pastor's wife contacted me several times to see if we wanted to come back. Um, but other than that, like when I spoke out about it, um, a lot of those women were like in my inbox telling me I was a liar, coming on to my page saying that I was completely like full of crap and how dare I say these things and how dare I bring these things up. And But then privately, I would speak to people that had left that would literally echo the exact same things I said. Where was the money going? Where was the doctrine? What was his goal? What was his point? Like, where was accountability? There was nothing. And I feel like it's so easy to get sucked into these when you are in a low point looking for community. Mm -hmm. And all you want is a place where you feel safe and you're like, you ignore all of the red flags just because you feel like they're giving you a community and it's just fake. It's, and when you put it in those terms, it's predatory. It is very predatory because they're looking for people that are in their most vulnerable state of mind. You know, they're encouraging people that are struggling. Come here. We are a church for the broken. We are a church for the messy. If you are vulnerable, if you are messy, come to us. We will help you. But then you get there and there's nothing there. But there's all these promises of community and friendship. and But then the demands are money, 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 money. <laughs> time, 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 time. Like, you need to be volunteering more. You need to be on a service team. You need to be doing this. Ugh. I was driving the bus to hell. I was 100 and now they've moved out of the neighborhood, but can I just tell you, we went on a walk today and we went past his old house and I was like, he doesn't even live there. And I was like, <laughs> I don't even, I'm sure the people that moved into that house are great, but I'm just like, I don't know who you are. And I wonder sometimes that the people in our lives were like, dude, they got into a cult. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Remember that day we finally left and we were like, I can't do this anymore. And then we started complaining about all the things that we had held in because we were too afraid to tell each other because we thought that we couldn't say <laughs> these things because we thought the other one had really bought into it. I do. Yeah. We were on a walk <laughs> and we, we had that discussion. Like we, it was like a, uh, we both had like a, an epiphany or not an epiphany, but like, um, we were just like these revelations of like, what are we doing? Like, you, you you, were thinking the same thing I was thinking yes. and vice versa, but yeah. neither one of us really communicated that to one another. Right. So we were... we feared that the other one was not in the same mind. Yeah. <laughs> so both of us start doubting it and we're like not into it. We're both super annoyed. And I'm just like, one day on a walk, I'm just like, I can't handle him anymore. What is his problem? And he's like, Todd's like, oh my God, thank God you said that. Now I can go back to my truth, <laughs> where my heart really is. And so we're on this walk, and I was just like, do you know how many times he asks for money? And Todd's like, don't even tell me about that money. I don't even want to even know how much money we gave them. God damn it, I don't want to know how much money we gave them. And I'm like, a lot. <laughs> I was I was kind of pissed. I, I know, you were so mad. I, I, I thought about going to Jeremiah and ask him for our money back. I know. But I mean, it is, it is what it is. And we were talking about the craziness of like, you're not supposed I, to have friends. And he'd always say women's heads are like spaghetti and men's houses are like, men's height, men's brains are like waffles. We compartmentalize everything. We're order and structure and women are all like emotional and blair. <laughs> like really? I'm gonna paint with a broad brush. Oh, and then the, the other thing too about like, they put up this facade that they were very open to all kinds of different people, including the LGBTQ um, plus community. Oh yeah, but they wouldn't. And, but but yeah, th th that was fake. <clears throat> that was that was real fake. So fake because they would do marriage series and they would always say marriage is between a, a man, man and a woman. woman. Always, even though it was legal for gay 
men and gay, you know, lesbians to get married and gay men to get married. It was always marriage in the context of the Bible is between a man and a woman. But if you're gay, you're welcome here. If you're gay, we'll take your 10%. Yeah. <laughs> what? And then he would they're, pride they're... himself. He'd pride himself. He's like, well, we've got those lesbians that are in our church. Oh, yeah. They were the token. They were... Like, they were the token lesbians. Yeah. Like, they they come here, so we must be good. Yeah, right. Like, what? Their, ten, their 10% was good. Their 10% was great. Sam's turning me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is actually kind of cathartic. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I feel like, wow, we just like had a rap session. (laughs) We could have become sister wives for sure. For sure. Sister? What do you mean? Yes. The other hook of these communities is giving your kids a religious foundation when the parents have parted from the faith of the upbringing. Yes. I, I agree with that because they would have their programs for youth was such a big thing. Yeah, they um, it's. I, I don't. I mean, I don't even think they try to be. I mean, non-trans. I mean, they're they're very, they're very transparent about the fact that um, they they uh, they really push to get uh, the younger people uh, in there because. I'm sure they look at the statistics. I'm sure that it's very much on their frontal lobe that that the church is losing people by oh one hundred percent yes the, yes mean, by the bucket loads. He like, would always talk about basis. how mm-hmm. not enough people in the community were actually going to church, and y- younger and younger people were getting away from the church, and so we have to make it appealing for children, and we have to have bouncy houses, and that's why they had their rock band. That's why they had their rock band. <laughs> I would not be a sister wife, good sister wife. Tell him how, like, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I don't share, do I, Todd? I've never had a reason to really not share. I mean, like, to, like, feel like I had to share, but I just wouldn't share. He's mine. I, I mean, you're not mine. Property. But I didn't understand that... that... Like, I would not, like, if you had another wife, I would have a hard time. Like, I couldn't be a sister wife, like a polygamist. Wow. (laughs) Who's got... Who has time for that? Who, yeah. Who has the energy for that? I'm tired with one. Right. I mean... Half the time I'm like, do we even have to talk? (laughs) (laughs) That was a joke. You're like... I was, <laughs> I, that didn't make, that didn't make me mad. That didn't offend me one bit. I, oh, I was okay. going to say, and then that's my cue to go in my studio. <laughs> oh yeah. Go in your studio, Todd. Go riff that guitar. By the way, Todd, you have an album coming out. Tell the folks. It was supposed to come out yesterday, but it got delayed. Oh. Um, it should be coming out in a few, a few weeks though. But, yeah. um. We've been uh, we've been getting uh, the 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 promotional uh, wheels are turning and we've been getting a lot of like really really positive reviews. I mean, in the ten years of this band's existence, we've n- never been um, I I don't want to say praised, but <laughs> we've we've never gotten such positive reviews as we have been with this new record. But um, if anybody knows the history behind the making of this new album, and I'm not going to go into it, but if they know um, kind of the history of what what went into it, they, it's it's very understandable that we um, I stepped up my writing game. <laughs> it's basically dedicated to our son. It's not really. It's it's, it's not inspired. A, it's, not a, it's not a dedication. It's inspired it's, by our son. It's um. It's it's basically a fifty minute musical journey of every single kind of emotion that I went through from the time that Vaughn was born up until I don't know after he had his heart surgery. Yeah, we went through some really rough times. 
And during those times, the church was like, give us money. We'll pray for you. Here's a casserole. Can I have your 10% now? Here's a casserole. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Here's a casserole. Where's your 10%? Is it, that's the, what is it though? The, the, is it, only Minnesotans? Is it, what, do, do, hot we, dish. No, we'll no say, we call it a hot dish. We're going to have a hot dish, you guys. Make the hot dishes. <laughs> Katie's going to be in the hospital with her bun. Here's but a, Katie, where's your 10%? Here's your wiener water soup. <laughs> all right well this was super fun i feel like we could do all kinds of life stories <laughs> we should do a podcast oh my god katie and todd talk about the world yeah we should do it we should do a podcast because i, I I don't like being censored, man. <laughs> I want to say I want to say what I really want to say, but well, I can't on here. And, I, and I, I, get, I get it. I get it. We're already I, restricted in this video. I don't know what we said. What? Not suitable for most advertiser. Oh, jeez. Who knows? It was probably something about Jesus. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Jesus. But if you are a Christian, again, we're not saying that this has anything to do with you. This was our experience with a, what I believe is a predatory church mm -hmm. that was very cult-like with a very charismatic cult-like leader um, that really took advantage of so many people in our community and took advantage of people at their lowest points, promising them the world and giving them nothing and only serving their egos mm -hmm. so um that also doesn't mean that we need to find god we are totally happy where we are we are totally happy with where we're at in our lives um but i think this experience um has shaped us and helped us understand better like how easy these people can prey on people at their lowest points and how dangling a community when you need something to feel better, like going through the death of a family member or a sick family member or raising a child with special needs, how these communities can really like prey on your vulnerability and like bring you in and then take, 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 take to the point where you are not recognizing yourself, broke from giving them all your money and wondering why the hell you're there. Right. So if you have found yourself in a situation like that, know you are not alone. You are welcome to share your experiences down here. I am always looking for others to share their experiences. And some people have asked me to do some more context around these Pentecostal churches. And others of you who have been in these types of churches have reached out to me and said, I would like to share my story. If you have been in a church like this and you have an, a, like a story, if you are from the Assemblies of God or wherever, and you want to talk about it, you have a place here. Reach out to me on social media, on either Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, or you can send me an email, which is in my about section. Todd and I would like to thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight. We are, hope, we are so grateful that you guys were here. And um, have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. She, she will. I, I will. Yeah, I will. He won't. Bye. Bye.